Hello, and welcome to Connect and Collaborate. I'm Alex Hopkins, your on-air producer. This week we are talking retail industries, and we're making a stretch today with our guests in-house. I have with me Colin Brunk. He is the business development guy for Interior Environments. I have Kim Zeller, who's the design design director. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say that properly <laughs> for you. And Jamie May, principal for Interior Environments. How are you guys doing today? Great. Great. How about well. yourself? Fantastic. Thanks for asking. So welcome, guys. I'm excited to have you here on Connect and Collaborate today. Thanks for having us. Uh, so let's talk about everyone's backgrounds and how you got into uh, designing furniture for offices. We'll start over here with you, Colin. I have a good story. So I used to work with actually my co-partner here at IE, uh, Chris Legner. We used to work at All Copy Products together. And during the process, he was selling Connect People in Space Machine. And at that time, they got acquired to, from IE. And they started interviewing Chris for a while. And then after that, they're like, well, we want someone just like you. So I interviewed, <laughs> met Steve, one of our owners. And he told Chris, we like him better. We need someone else. We got to replace you. So, <laughs> so him and I have been pretty happy over a year now enjoying IE. So that's how we got on board. Nice. Awesome. All right. Kim? Uh, so I have a little longer history with <laughs> furniture. <laughs> um, I actually, I'm a Denver native, actually, which is um, you're hard a to rare come by. breed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I don't plan to go anywhere. But um, <laughs> so I went to Colorado State University for my interior design degree, okay. um, and then um, trying to find an internship and all that, I uh, landed at a steelcase dealer in town for an internship. Stayed there six years, went to another dealership, and ended uh, with uh, all steel with interior environments. So I've been doing furniture for over 12 years now. Nice. Yeah. Congrats. A couple of questions for you there. Are you required to do an internship? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Not every <laughs> industry requires it. Oh, yeah. Yes. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, you were you an intern for six years? No. Or? Okay. No, no, no. Sorry. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no. I was an intern for, I don't, I got, I don't even remember, but um, maybe six months a year, and then they hired me on when I graduated. Nice. So, yeah. That's, oh, that. So, all I've done is furniture. Okay. Which, yeah. All right. And Jamie? Well, I took a, <clears throat> I took the long path into the industry. Okay. Um, I have a degree in art and business, and had a professor at the Art Institute of Chicago that basically said, hey, you don't necessarily fit because you don't want to be a starving <laughs> artist. And I wanted to be the curator of the Art Institute. And he said, well, money and that doesn't work. Uh -huh. So I got into sales and started selling the eight color process on the West Coast and met someone at the uh, John Wayne Airport at the bar. And it was in commercial interiors. Uh -huh. So I started selling fabric um, going back 22 years and then went to floor covering, then to furniture and kind of fell into interior environments through working with the guys um, 15 plus years ago. And we always talked about getting together on business. And when they purchased out here in Denver, I came aboard. Nice. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> let's talk about interior environments. You opened up in 2012, is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. we were an all steel owned dealer at the time. Uh, we opened 2012, um, me meaning so all steel is our manufacturer. Um, to kind of relate to it, I, I hate to use this correlation, but it's kind of like a car dealership. So certain car dealerships will sell certain manufacturers' cars. Um, so that's kind of how the furniture industry works. Okay. Um, it's a little, little looser than that. But um, so at that time when we opened in 2012, <laughs> our manufacturer actually owned us, um, which um, had its perks and its um, not so much perks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then in uh, 2016. Thank you. Two years ago, uh, uh, they acquisitioned with Interior Environments out of Detroit, and it was like one of the best days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes, I love it. So, yeah. um, and yes, and yeah. I don't know if you. So, well, for Interior Environments, we've been in business since 1999. Okay. And from the brand perspective, H and I are all steel. They're the third. Lar we are the third largest uh, dealership in the country. Oh, and wow. at the time, we only had one location. So they, were, they said, right, we want you guys to keep growing with us and gave us a list of cities that you could kind of pick from mm -hmm. and buy the owned dealership, which was by the manufacturer. They gave us, we're in, we're in Detroit, so we know what's going on in Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> they said, how about Cleveland? We said, well, you know, we're already in Detroit. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> exactly. And they gave a couple different locations and they mentioned Denver. Mm -hmm. And one of the owners, Randy Balcone, you know, loves coming out here with his family and skiing. And so 
you know, as soon as he said Denver, he said, thanks, I'm on my way. Yeah. Well, and Cleveland, so, Denver. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right? I, Dark yeah. at four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> snows all the time. Exactly. And in the summertime, it's miserable and humid. And just, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's cool. I'm from there, but that's fine. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I did a two-year story in Columbus. <laughs> and it, not exactly Cleveland, but I was born in Ohio. Oh, okay. Nice. I, I got out quickly. It's fine. Totally fine. And obviously moved You're here. here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For a reason. So I, tell me about that transition. How has that been for you? Likes, dislikes? Not that we want to say anything bad, but... Sure. Yeah. Well, I think for us purchasing the business, if... Um, coming into a town where you're kind of the outsider coming in, having folks like Kim on the team, and we have several, I'd say three or four Colorado natives. We have five. Five, now. which That's is huge. That's exciting, yeah. 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 For any I think industry. my first like, two months being here, I think I counted maybe seven or eight Colorado natives, and we have five in the office, which is good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, Denver's very much a relationship-driven town, and where we, were, we are at currently in purchasing a business you know, being the new guy into town and, you know, having this big Michigan influence, you know, probably um, has been more of the story for our co competition. But the marketplace is very receptive to people coming in that want to kind of work in Colorado and be a part of the, like, the local scene. So we're kind of, do we're doing well and we're excited for the future. Yep. Nice. And you've seen this transition, right, completely? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So tell me about it from your perspective. Um, I think, you know, there's, it's, it was a great experience for me <laughs> um, but I will say it um, all still does great at manufacturing products um, and you know making sure all the quality of their products and meeting their customers needs which would be the dealer um, I wouldn't say they were great at running a dealership because they were from the manufacturer side mm -hmm. um, but all in all when we started this I knew we all knew one day that we weren't always going to be owned by them, that something would happen. Um, and it was great that when Interior Environments came in because they were exactly what we wanted to be. Um, they're fun, they're fresh, they, you know, have a different approach than I would say kind of the status quo of all the other dealers. Um, and uh, just being independent and being able to have a little bit more leeway. And the funny thing is, is um, when we were owned by All Steel, we got less perks than IE did because IE is such a great uh, dealership for them. Um, and they have a great partnership together. So wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How's the? Now you I came just in love a... working for them. Okay. <laughs> I literally love my job. <laughs> That's so hard to say, right? It, no, it's not. It's oh, very not easy you, to say. But <laughs> like, yeah. Great people, great company. They know what they want, and they want to be able to treat their employees right, and then also work hard, play hard sort of thing. So it's been a dream. Can't complain at all. Yeah. Now, I actually met you because you guys do this happy hour thing every other Thursday, right? right. Mm -hmm. Now, how did that come about? That was I, that was fun. Hello, me. hello <laughs> over there. <laughs> well, so early on in my career for um, a way to get designers out mm -hmm. and to meet people in the marketplace, we used to do this. We called it every other Thursday. And we would blast out to a couple different influencers. We work a lot with architects and interior designers and commercial real estate uh, brokers and project managers. We would send out, like, hey, we're going to this specific bar at this time. You know, join if you can. And as that kind of took off, every other week I would send it out to more people. And so sometimes you might have five or ten, sometimes you might have 30 or 40. And it became this thing where the industry started to count on it. So we'd always have it, and people just started to come, and, and Chris and Colin on the team kind of adopted this uh, starting in February, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And we started picking one spot, going back, and now it just kind of has life on, the, on its own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fun stuff. So do you, do you build a lot of business that way? Do, has that been successful for you in building business? Uh, yeah, I think it's been planting the seed quite a bit from yeah. building relationships. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. We are in a, kind of a unique industry where it's not see today by tomorrow. It's really what you did last year today because the project cycle for building a building so long okay. that we're fitting out a, you know, redoing a floor. So it takes some time. <laughs> so it's really kind of planting that today for next year at this time. Gotcha. So walk me through the process, if you don't mind. If I were to come to you and say, please redo this room, it looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I might I might or might not be saying that <laughs> for my boss's benefit. But <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. We were wondering if you guys needed any new furniture. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I would, I would love some new furniture. Um, but yeah, so from idea to implementation, how does that work? So um, it, it really depends on the project as well, like as far as size and scope. Um, you know, what we do usually, we're looking at like floors of furniture that we're helping uh, corporations and companies um, either redo or move into. Um, a lot of the timeline is based on kind of their lease timelines and when they're going to be able to take ownership or um, control of that property. Um, but it's really, you know, kind of um, starting to get to know, you know, what's the driver behind what they're trying to change or do in the space. Um, and uh, then, you know, really we put together a team for you. So that would be Colin as kind of your... Uh, sales and um, account manager and then uh, pair him with a designer like myself or one of our other five designers that we have and then there's always a principal um, participation in it as well and that's kind of the front end of it but then there's also a complete whole support team behind us as well for operations because um, we're not just selling furniture, we're um, implementing it, executing it, installing it, making sure it's on time, it's scheduled. There's a lot of things behind the scene that you yeah. don't um, think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You just think it's colors and right. um, <laughs> nice offices, but <laughs> there's a lot of hard work that goes into right. it. And there's a lot of change management because, mm -hmm. you know, we work with the architects or the interior designers in conjunction to what they're doing to make the space beautiful and then Kim's team's really working on the layouts and, and different things that way. Mm -hmm. But it impacts the end, end user tremendously. And then there's kind of like that ear of, hey, here's where you're going. You started here and now you're moving to a completely different floor plan. And that means a lot for different people. So there's still that humanization side of, I might have had an office last week and now I'm going into open plan. Or I had high panels mm -hmm. and now there's no panels. So really trying to educate the end user on, here's what you're doing and why. Yep. It's a big part of what we and do. And you're seeing that change happen a lot um, because, first of all, just technology and there's, you know, four or five different generations working in the same office together. It's hard for employers to meet the needs of everybody, mm -hmm. you know, um, because everybody has their own quirks and, you know, your office space is very personal. You're there long, usually more than you're at your house or with your family, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. But, right. Um, and that's, uh, you know, one thing that makes me passionate about what we do because we're really providing a great space environment for people to thrive in for what they want to do. Um, and part of that is helping um, these companies understand how to, if you're doing a five-year lease or seven-year lease, how can you utilize the space efficiently and be able to help it grow with your business? Um, so it's not just, you know, filling it up with furniture. It's understanding can, you know, you plan this so it's flexible, it's agile, and it's changing with the way work is changing because we don't work in a cubicle <coughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You know, all alone, everybody, you know, we've found that, you know, you're much more productive when you're open to each other, you can work in teams, mm -hmm. and then, you know, um, the baby boomers can, you know, transfer their knowledge to the millennials, and it makes a much more um, open and collaborative work space. Awesome. So you yeah. guys are, are really, you're, you're building beautiful spaces for people then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you, do you run into any issues with... Um, a lack of knowledge on the design side of things? Um, oh, if I'm designing it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I didn't mean you personally. I meant, I meant the people that want to implement the, yeah. the new office spaces, right? You, you, I'm sure that people have an idea of what they want in their head, but it's mm -hmm. not always going to work, right. right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, it, it's... There's very many different customers that we have. We have some that are very open to change and want to kind of push the boundary to what they can do and how they can um, change uh, their workplace strategy, um, where there's other others that may be a little bit more timid to change and maybe, you know, change is scary, even for the employers. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that takes a little bit more time to kind of walk them through to understand, you know, what are your business issues that you're trying to um, solve for, you okay. know, and have them think through it that way. Right. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Has there been a project of yours that you've been very proud of or you, it's the one story that you want to share? Oh, geez. Oh, there's a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, the one that I um, took uh, a lot of pride in was, so we worked with a startup company in Boulder. You know, it was just really small startup. They were in Ikea furniture, didn't really have facilities or understand what they were doing. And then they finally decided that they needed to come, you know, have somebody who knew what they were doing with furniture um, come to a contract furniture place. And um, we worked with them on their first little small startup office in Boulder. Um, we've done, I don't know, many locations now from Boulder to Denver to um, Anaheim, lots of places in California. And uh, the great part was to see that customer grow and mature, and now they're a publicly traded company. Wow. Um, yeah. And so, and going through that, their needs that they had day one as a startup are completely different now for the needs that they have uh, present day. So being able to kind of provide both of those solutions and go through that process with them was really great. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's cool. Uh, so... Walk me through some current market trends, if you don't mind. So I don't know much about this mm -hmm. industry as far as the competitiveness and <laughs> where are you in the game? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> trends in the workplace are, is probably one longer conversation, but mm -hmm. from a competition perspective, um, you know, there's a lot of competition in Denver because mm -hmm. everybody wants to be in Denver. So coming from like a city like Chicago, there's less dealers in Chicago than there are in Denver. Really? Mm -hmm. And that's primarily because there's a lot of what we call lifestyle type dealers where they work, you know, it's, I, I, it's kind of a, they have some projects, maybe they do, maybe they don't. They just kind of, they're still in the game because of the, the lifestyle of it. Um, you know, here it's much more of a transaction or a bid town than some of the other cities that I've worked in. And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Okay. But from a competitive landscape, you know, we think that there's um, a wide open spot for us to aspire to the third slot in this town, you know, for the next few years, and then where, where we go from there is anyone's game. Mm -hmm. um, but we are the third largest all steel dealer in the country, so there's no reason why we shouldn't be at least the third largest dealer in this town. Absolutely. Yeah. So, goals to be number one? Well, I would say right now we're going to shoot for number three. And <laughs> <laughs> so. Perfect. Yeah. Good to know. Um, well, let's talk a little bit more about the trends. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Kim? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> So um, kind of like I was saying, um, it, it really depends on the type of business too, right? Um, but here in Denver, we have um, a lot of tech companies, um, not as much oil and gas, but still oil and gas here. Um, but kind of the the n newer companies they're looking for flexible agile space so um and i think everybody knows like biggest trends are also ergonomics so height adjustability you need monitor arms you need everything to be healthy and provide a healthy workspace for your employees um i would say that's a huge not trend but i would say that's a huge focus that um, most design firms and uh, customers and employees are wanting to provide to their uh, employees. So um, providing healthy space, but then as far as kind of the design part of an office, you're seeing not a lot of um, hierarchy anymore. You know, private offices are going away mm -hmm. and even, you know, uh, the big guy is sitting in the open workspace with everybody so that he is approachable and um, it's kind of just having more open communication. Um, I other think things, um, yeah. I don't, maybe it's a trend, maybe it's not, but retention, oh, just yes. for like trying to keep people going because I am unfortunately a millennial and <laughs> not that I'm happy about it, Me but too. that's when I was born. <laughs> I got an old soul, but um, I, it, I just have a lot of friends who jump around from job to job. And, mm -hmm. I personally would rather stay at a company my whole life and just 
build my wealth through that. But which yeah, is not a millennial characteristic. Right. Right. Not at all. Yeah. Old soul. Old yeah. soul. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say retention is huge for companies right now. Maybe they don't know it directly at first, but when it gets down to the nitty gritty, they're like, okay, how are we going to keep people around mm-hmm. for longer and keep them? So. Yeah, and I think in Denver that's huge because there's so many companies coming here. They are wanting to attract the top mm-hmm. talent and mm-hmm. also keep the top talent that they have. So, um, so it's um, you're seeing a lot of companies provide a lot more amenities. Like um, we have customers that have kegerators, they have wine, um, you know, whatever, <laughs> and, <laughs> and lots you know, of bottles yeah, of wine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like they have free lunch days, or there's snack bars, and a lot of those type of amenities. But also. Um, you know, providing the right type of workspace for people as far as height adjustable desks. Um, I think that's one of the huge things, especially for people who um, are at the computer all the, all day long. You know, you want them to be comfortable and be relaxed and be able to move around. So, yeah. Yeah. When I have been to your office and it's, it's, eclectic in there because you're showing off what you've got right, right. yeah right yeah um, but what I heard was that you have a lot of people that come in thinking it's a workspace mm-hmm. yes right? they think it's a co-working space yeah. <laughs> um, thoughts on running out maybe you could do that right <laughs> make a little money on the side yeah <laughs> maybe maybe when we move into our next space right. but <laughs> yeah I'm a little tight yeah. <laughs> in our current space <laughs> well and because it is a working show we do make it available to our customers or you know industry Uh, groups that if they need to have a place to have a meeting they can come in and it's no charge to the folks from the industry to come in that's cool Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and part of that is also going on the uh, trend I guess you'd say is working anywhere because there's so many mobile workers anymore Mm -hmm. that you're not just in the office all day you got to jump from meeting to meeting um, and so we can be a landing spot for people who are in between and just need to come and hang out but um, obviously they're um, influencers and right. stuff that do that, not just anybody. <laughs> right. Just not anybody walking yeah. looking yeah. for the 7-Eleven next door. Yeah. We, we got a club with a couple of them once yeah. in a while, though. You got to have the VIP pass. <laughs> you have to know somebody right. yeah. to be in here. Uh, so let's touch on your current projects in the next few minutes that we've got here before we go to break. What's hot right now for you? Um, space-wise, I would say there's a lot of co-working space being done. Mm-hmm. Um, we just finished firm space. Uh, it's around, what, 14th and Laramere? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's a, a great one for us. We did all the demountable walls and all the furniture. And it's kind of like, it's a co-working space, so mm-hmm. that seems to be a big trend in the Denver market. Um, and really yeah. kind of across the country, it seems to be a big deal. Yeah, and these co-working spaces kind of, they kind of want to um, focus on one kind of segment or market. So like firm space, um, they're um, advertising to kind of upscale uh, you know, law, uh, lawyers, that kind of professional where there's other uh, co-working spaces where it's more driven towards the creative or the, the tech. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Very exciting stuff. Where can I find you guys? 17th and Blake. Awesome. Yeah. Also online, maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have a website. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, so www.ieoffices.com. Oh, okay. And nice you can and see simple. the whole team on there, yep. too. Yep. And awesome. See some fun facts about us. <laughs> do you have a fun fact, real quick, off the top of your head? Oh, I do, but you can't ask me to do it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'll have to go online okay. and check yeah. that out then. I can touch my elbows behind my back. Well, now I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. we, we may have to make you yeah. do that. Okay, maybe later. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, so definitely check out ieoffices.com. Mm-hmm. You can check out this podcast and more at cobrt.com slash radio dash podcast. I want to ask our audience out there to please check out cobrt.com. Sign up for our newsletter. It comes out every Tuesday, so it just came out today. And uh, be sure to sign up for our event, View from the Top. It's a CEO panelist event on Monday, August 20th. So you guys are welcome to come to that. Tickets are online and available now. And uh, stay with us during this break. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back to Connect and Collaborate. Once again, I'm Alex Hopkins, your on-air producer. And I have in studio with me Colin Brunk. He is with the Business Development for Interior Environments. I have Kim Zeller, Design Director for Interior Environments, 
and Jamie May, principal of Interior Environment. <laughs> now that I've said it over <laughs> and over again, I that hope rolls. that that sticks, That's right? <laughs> Um, so we touched on it a little bit in the last segment, but you mentioned that you guys are getting ready to move. Yes. Exciting yes, stuff. We are. Very much. Yeah. So tell me all about it. <laughs> so we um, are currently we're um, at like 17th and Blake, mm -hmm. and about a little less than 6,000 square feet, and um, we're ready to. We're growing. We need more space. Um, we need more space to show off everything. Um, so we cr um, just purchased a building. Um, in the Lodo area. I don't know, can I share it? Or? Sure. I hope so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually a historical building, Engine House Number 5, um, oh. that an architecture firm currently is in right now that we uh, purchased it from. And it's a pretty cool space. We're excited about it. Um, it has some pretty uh, unique uh, characteristics because it was an engine house. Um, and um, we're currently working through the design um, with IA, who is our design firm that we've hired to partner with. Um, and uh, yeah, we actually have our final design meeting tomorrow. Yep. So. <coughs> Exciting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's about 13,000 square feet. So we're wow. doubling in space. Yeah. With a rooftop. With a rooftop. Make sure that's understood. <laughs> <laughs> Very important. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> um, the cool thing about this building is um, the uh, architecture firm that is in it currently had it LEED certified. Um, so LEED is um, Leaderships in... Uh, Energy and Efficient Design. Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, and so um, there's some cool things like it's solar powered. There's a lot of mechanics in the building that make it much more efficient. And so um, we're kind of wanting to provide that healthy uh, workspace for our employees and our customers when they come. Um, and so we're going to be ongoing doing that LEED certification. Um, there's different levels, so we'll be operating and maintaining it as a kind of a LEED certified building, um, which is huge. That so, is huge. And it's a platinum building, which they think there's only two in Colorado that are platinum. So What what does that mean? Is that like <laughs> a status best rating? Of the yeah. best. Yeah. So like there's, okay. there's like gold. Silver, silver, silver gold, gold, and platinum. platinum. So wow. yeah, there's a lot of silver and golds, but not too many platinums. So. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Exciting thank you. stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, so you are working with the design team. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is interesting because mm -hmm. I, I feel like you could do that on your own, <laughs> right? Well, <laughs> we are not architects. Right. <laughs> Fair. Okay. <laughs> um, so we do need to rely on our partners to help us um, figure out our vision just as much as our customers need to rely on us to help them with theirs. Um, you know, we um, definitely know furniture. Um, but really um, need to uh, partner with somebody who can help us with the whole design picture. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, uh, can, can you give us a sneak peek of describing what the space is going to look like, or do you want mm. to make sure people just come by? I have we no want to idea. do the big unveil. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I won't. I won't <laughs> I ask you any more questions yeah. about that then. But it's going to be super cool. Yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly. And the rooftop. <laughs> right. Uh, do you? How do you plan on utilizing that? If I could ask that. Jamie. Customer event. <laughs> okay. Probably, is probably the biggest one. Yeah. And you know, just impromptu meetings and things like that. Okay. So it's. You know, we're going to be a block away from the Rocky Stadium, so it's it's a great location. And really, in, especially in this marketplace, I mean, I'm surprised that there's not rooftops everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Because it's sunny 300 days a year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, living in the Midwest or living in the South, you can't really, you're not going outside. Mm -hmm. But here, yeah. there's no reason not to be outside. Yeah. Exactly. And no bugs, right? No so bugs. Yeah. yeah. No. That's the best part. <laughs> I, yeah. Coming from this, yes. And I, no humidity. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Very big to me. Um, so I, I love this. Congratulations, Thank you guys. You. It's very exciting stuff. So when will that be open? Uh, so we're going to start construction November 1st and hope to have eight weeks of construction to be done December, December 31st. 31st. Wow. So yeah. you guys are going quick. Right. Well, we've done it before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, in uh, Detroit, they redid, they remodeled their showroom um, in six, six days. days. Wow. So, yeah, we actually we have a time lapse video of it and everything. Yeah. But, oh, that's um, cool. So we're Some like eight weeks. Yeah. No problem. Uh, <laughs> really? yeah, yeah, for twice the size, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit more, uh, you know, cosmetic and construction going on, but um, oh yeah, yeah. we think mm -hmm. it's totally doable. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, I am excited to see that for you guys. Let's focus a little bit on our customers here. Um, I know you mentioned one of your favorites that you worked on. Anybody else got a favorite story that they'd like to share about customers or projects particularly? Well, I think we're, you know, sometimes when people say, well, what's your, you know, everybody says, well, what's your, what's in your wheelhouse? Like, what's your sweet spot? What does that mean? And, you know, we always say that <coughs> we, can do, we can do the large project, we can do the small project. Our ultimate goal is to, to build a long-term partnership. And some of the ways that I think come to mind, the way we grew the business or started the business originally was we were known for doing whatever it takes to get the client in on time, on budget, with little, little or no punch. And so when people hear that, they're like, well, what does that mean? Like, we go the extra mile. Like, Kim's team will stay all night if they have to work on drawings to get something done. Our installation team will do the same. And, and kind of on the front wheel, you know, we're building those relationships and doing whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. We've had, um, kind of in the past, we had a corporate end user. And we can do work nationally. They had this big project. Well, the facilities manager that we were working with forgot to order the mock-up for the demountable walls. And it was on a Friday, CEO was coming in on Monday to say, hey, this is what we're gonna do or not do. So Friday afternoon, we got, the design team had to design it, plan for it, we had to get it built, shipped from Iowa to Michigan, all in like 72 hours. Oh my goodness. And because of the relationships that we have with our folks internally and our partner manufacturer, we are able to make that all happen, get it in on time, and never said a word to anybody else. So the facility manager was the only person that knew. Mm -hmm. And we were able to pull that off. And, and if we, you know, from doing something like that, you build a lifelong customer. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. That's what a shining moment yeah. for you. <laughs> so we're, we're kind of known for the, we'll do whatever it takes to get it done. Yep. And so when we talk about flipping it or remodeling our space in, say, eight weeks, when we were in Michigan and we did it, it was really more to prove to the market that with planning and, you know, execution we flipped our space and in, in Detroit's about the same size about 13,000 feet mm -hmm. so we did all the demo paint carpet and building all in six days to kind of prove a point to our competition that was taking two years to do theirs wow. so we're tad competitive <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like extreme home makeover right. Right? did you pull a bus up and like block it yeah. <laughs> And then I'd have to say, I'm actually working with um, an architectural design firm to redo the lobby space and their cafe area and their outside for a uh, plaza down in DTC. And I actually used to cold call on that in my previous jobs. And though <laughs> when we got that job, I was like, oh my God, is Linda still there? And, and Linda's still there killing it. So it's like, it's fun to be able to bring two different jobs completely together and then help them show the, the value on our end when yeah. we go to do the install. So. Nice. Yeah, like you said, it's a relationship, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. This yeah. is definitely a relationship yeah. town for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I, I got to go the opposite here. <laughs> Every business has a little bit of failure mm -hmm. to it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how you learn from your mistakes and right. move on. So is there one or several failures maybe sure. that you've had? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a great question, right? Yeah. Because celebrating or everybody likes to celebrate the wins right of course. but making the mistakes actually makes you better mm -hmm. um, I would just say from a like to the market condition you know when we bought the business here and I, I came into the market last last year in August and we talked about the Detroit location and the Denver location and we do things like this in Detroit well we quickly realized in the market basically said hey we don't care about Detroit you're in Denver and mm -hmm. so we had to kind of quickly reshape that. So, you know, a failure, yes. Opportunity for, uh, for improvement, definitely. Mm -hmm. And so taking that kind of learning and making sure that our materials and everything is more focused to Colorado and celebrating Colorado versus, you know, Michigan. It's easy to talk about, the, you know, the overall company, but here we really need to speak to Denver and what we're doing for the Colorado market. Okay, so that's interesting. So mm -hmm. I. I guess uh, maybe a little bit of background of your Detroit base then would help, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, you've got some roots in the hand, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the Michigan hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And that's really what's interesting is that's where um, our, our, say, signature line, All Steel, or the H&I brands is based in Muscatine, Iowa. Okay. The furniture industry is kind of headquartered in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. So our competition would all be there and our dealership we're the only company say not manufacturing in 
Michigan. Okay. So our competition there years and years ago used to take that out of us, right? And we kind of went to market with this, we can do whatever it takes to help out. And so we are one of the largest dealers in Michigan, even though we don't represent a Michigan-based manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, coming this way, that's, that's kind of, again, the same thing. Yeah. There's been some established dealerships here that we're actually, it's great for us because mm -hmm. that's how we grew the business before and that's how we're gonna grow it here. Right. We'll come, like, from a service and relationship, we're gonna take it that way. Yeah, well, and that speaks volumes, right? To be mm -hmm. one of the largest companies and not even have your dealership be based. Yeah, right. yeah that's and amazing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. also just to be that successful in Detroit. Right. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you talk about the, the failures. So we were able to maintain every, every person <clears throat> and the business in Michigan during the downturn in the economy. And uh, Michigan was already in the downturn years before everybody else got there. Mm -hmm. So to maintain the entire staff, not lay anybody off and continue to grow mm -hmm. when everybody else was closing up mm -hmm. was a testament to what we do. Oh, absolutely. And that's, uh, yeah, I, I, goodness gracious, I remember I could have bought a house, I could have whole, bought a whole block of houses in Detroit right. when, when the economy right. turned. That, right. I mean, my, my hope for buying a house in Denver has definitely gone out the window. But <laughs> 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 um, So you are thriving, though, in, mm -hmm. this, in this market in yep. Denver. Yeah. yeah. So... How's the competition for you here? Who, who? So you're aiming for three. Where are you now? Well, in that three, four, five, probably. Okay. Somewhere in that. You know, I, I think by this time next year we'll be in. This, we'll be in third for sure. Absolutely. Like a cemented third. Yeah. So what would it take to get you there? What's the, like? What's the ultimate goal? What's your big fish that you need? Oh, that's a great one. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to say we always need more business, right? Yeah. Right. Um, I think as we move into our new space and people see us for, we're not just a group of people coming in from Detroit, that we actually have a true physical presence with a standalone building making a big presence. It's not a small space. It's an impressive large space. And we're hiring. We're bringing people in. The excitement of our business development team being out forward-facing and networking People know who Chris and Colin are. They know who Interior Environments is. It's now about the community giving us that opportunity and that shot. Mm -hmm. And once we get into that new space, people are like, right, they're not owned by that manufacturer. They don't, that how you got to where you're at is gone. It's, holy cow, That's they are yeah. staying here because they've invested in Denver. Yep. So. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's exciting stuff for you guys. So mm -hmm. um, any other customer stories or failures you want to share? I'm not tall oh. enough yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gosh, I think, um, you know, just as a, a designer in um, a furniture dealership, um, I think people um, a lot of times think that we are just kind of picking out finishes and showing you pretty pictures, but there's a lot more technicality and um, almost uh, engineering that goes into furniture because you're putting in all these little pieces and you have to, and not only that, but designers are responsible for the specifications, making sure every single quantity, piece, part, everything is right and the application's right. And, um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes um, we're human and we make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember um, there's been a couple of mistakes I've made. <laughs> but, um, you know, ordering the wrong finish on, you know, 90 surfaces or something like oh, that, no. you know. But ah. um, the thing about that is being able to have that good relationship with your customer and also with your employer right. <laughs> um, you know that they understand that people make mistakes and it's all about how you fix it and um, that's one thing we do like you know we will own up and we'll right. be accountable for you know mistakes we make and we make sure it's right and we try to get it done as fast as we can so awesome. yeah. have you guys ever had to um, Stop working with someone because it was too difficult. Has that ever been an issue? Kim for does you? that with me all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That I can see. That I can absolutely see. <laughs> you know, there are uh, time to times where you have a, a customer where you really want, I mean, clearly we're in sales, so you always want the business. But there are some times where you'd love to say, we're going to fire that customer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but we're, you know, we're certainly not there. Um, we, we're extremely transparent, so having 
you know, that hard conversation with a customer that might not have realistic expectations or, you know, a lot of times for us, the end date or the move-in date never changes. It might take the end user forever to make the decision and that kind of puts us in a situation to fail okay. because we can't get the product that they wanted on time. So then we have to reselect and be, hey, <coughs> so you gave us now four weeks, so this is what you can get or you have to wait. Uh, that's always a hard conversation, mm -hmm. but we are so transparent that we always say to our clients, you're either gonna you know, like us for that or not like us for it, but we're still gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing you can do that brings it back around when somebody thinks they're moving in and they think everything's gonna be there and you walk in and it's half the stuff's missing. Yeah. And that's when you tell them that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. And then I even, when I first started, had a project and they came in and it was great. We built great rapport and at the end of the day, they just didn't have the money to actually do what they wanted. Yeah. And so it was that hard conversation of, hey, we would love to be able to help you out, but with the parameters you're giving us, we just can't get you into those shoes. Right. So it's it's recognizing the, that and just having it early with them so we can all save a bunch of time. So. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So what? how can I be the best customer? <laughs> 15,000 square feet. No. Uh, <laughs> all new debts. <laughs> Yeah, what does your ideal customer look like, though? I think... Um, open and honest. Yeah, yeah. open-minded. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, being willing to uh, create change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not yeah. not experience change, but create change, right? You know? Yeah. Um, um, and as long as they're open to that, and um, I think that makes the best, most successful projects yeah. when they're passionate about wanting their people to be happy. Mm -hmm. oh. So, you know. Yeah. Um, how does working out a budget with people, that, that's always a tough conversation, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, walk me through that process a little bit. I think, Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, the best way that we um, can give people um, what they're asking for is by understanding what their budget is. And a lot of times you hear, well, we don't, we don't have a budget, we don't know, or we don't know furniture, or how much this is gonna cost, um, which, you know, granted so, but um, at the end of the day, everybody kind of has an understanding of what they can spend, you know? And so it's really being able to explain that we can design to your budget by, because not only are we a, a dealer for all steel and HMI, we have 250 other manufacturers, so a lot of times what we're doing as a team is blending these products together to meet a client's budget. So even though they might like this, you know, Herman Miller chair that they, you know, it's ungodly expensive and they can't afford it, we have alternatives that are probably much lower price, yeah. same quality, that um, we can give them what they want. Yeah. So it's just being able to, as long as they're upfront and honest yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. The it's hardest thing sometimes is understanding what the budget is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Because sometimes people want to, you know, so you want to go shopping and understand <laughs> what you can get. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the folks that are pull like we have a CFO in the mix or we have someone that's kind of, this is the move that they're doing, they've been waiting their entire career to do. Well, sometimes that can go great or it can go really mm -hmm. wrong. So it's really understanding where they want to, where it wants to fit because customers are, you know, end users really also want to show that they're fiscally responsible to their people. So spending whatever it takes to get this world-class space and then the company doesn't perform financially, mm -hmm. if you're an employee there, that doesn't bode well either. Right. So really understanding what that sweet spot might be. We always give a couple different options and then you can blend it from there. So we help kind of set a budget, but then to Kim's point, we design to the budget. We don't push a specific product and that's a big thing for us it's really understanding what the need is and then providing the right solution for that mm -hmm. all right awesome so i i you can tailor anything then, mm -hmm. right so yeah. you're open to being able to do that do you have set packages how does that work um not necessarily i mean it depends and um, we've been concentrating a lot on kind of the corporate uh, field right now, mm -hmm. but we also, um, we have a lot of healthcare clients, um, we do hospitality, um, there's, mm -hmm. you know, law firms, very different levels, very different uh, market segments that are all our customers. Um, and so it's really, and um, the knowledge of um, the team of what manufacturers fit where, okay. and how we can use those yep. within our, what 
we're really customizing a package for every customer. Um, we don't, it's not a boilerplate kind of, oh, you're package number one, and you're package number right. two. That's okay. not our approach at all. Right. Um, because then we wouldn't be doing our job well. Yeah. <laughs> so. so, yeah, I mean, part of it is we listen really well, mm -hmm. and we work with the architecture and interior designer if they have one, and then kind of take what we heard from them and what we give people an initial, what we call thought starters from a presentation perspective, just giving. We heard this for somewhat of a workstation, private office, or ancillary, which is like open areas and things like that, that we can kind of start to define a direction. And that's usually, because I think folks in the industry understand what stuff is and what it does, mm -hmm. but if you're a typical end user and you've never looked at a floor plan before or a line drawing of what a typical is, they don't get it. Mm -hmm. So to show them visual representations of what you know, um, workstations look like, or private offices, or conference tables. It's extremely helpful because it locks in on, does it, or an aesthetic direction, and also somewhat of a price direction too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned that you you do offices, but you also are in hospitality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, hosp healthcare. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So tell me about that. Um, so okay. yeah, I think. The most important part is like we want to diversify who our clients are, um, and so we do have um, an account manager that focuses on healthcare. Uh, we have one in Denver and also one in Novi where they're the healthcare people. They understand um, how hospitals work, how exam rooms work. Um, there's a lot of technical um, uh, things that you need to meet for um, furnishing the spaces to the public. You know, um, for um, just kind of public health and safety. Right. Um, so we also have designers that know the healthcare industry and what those parameters are, you know, like the back of their hand, um, so that we know that we're providing the uh, correct stuff. And then um, hospitality too, um, especially here in Denver, I think um, we've had great success with working with restaurants and bars and, you know, people wanting to provide a cool space for their clients. And, you know, we have manufacturers that fit that bill as well. Um, with office space, um, you know, there's there's kind of a furniture s industry standard called BIFA, where everybody, all the manufacturers have to meet these testing standards, kind of like, you know, the safety of a car, how they have to yeah. meet these. So um, part of that is um, the designers and everybody understanding um, per the uh, environment what they need to meet. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's neat. I, I did not know that. You guys are a wealth of information <laughs> for me today. Um, so we have a couple minutes yep. here. I'm going to ask each one of you, what is your favorite part of the job? Ooh. Collaborating yeah. with my team. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all get along so well. We're like brothers, sisters, and just like we're, we are a family. So I would yeah. say a team's the, my favorite part. Awesome. Yeah. Now, you guys can't say that. So. <laughs> well, I, I would say... For me, it's working in the industry and the relationships that you build mm -hmm. because we get to be a part of great spaces. And at the end of the day, whether you work with an architect and interior designer and we do the inside, we all turn around the same day that it's open and get to look at it. So it's fantastic. Yeah. And I would say as a designer, it's just it's gratifying to see your work finished, but not just a project. Um, being able to do uh, multiple projects with the same client is always wonderful to see. Yeah, as you mentioned in the first segment, you got to work with that startup in Boulder and see them grow yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's really rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, so um, once again, ieoffices.com. Yes. Yes, and you guys are moving on up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe so, it. Yeah, <laughs> that is hoping that we are going to get that done December 31st. Yes. That's right. 2018. Yep. There's no yes. hope. New yeah. There's New only do. <laughs> Absolutely. And on January 1st, you're going to be number three. Yeah. That's right. yeah. <laughs> All right. Lofty goals, guys. I'm excited yes. for you. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Yes. Of course, thank you so much for joining thank me today you. here Thanks, on Ellen. Connect and Collaborate. Check out this podcast and more at cobrt.com slash radio dash podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube page while you're here. Appreciate that, Colin. <laughs> and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.